Championship race. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay with Lloyd Carr is brought to you in part by the joy of Pepsi and by Big Boy Restaurants. Big Boy makes you say, oh boy. That is the greatest there has never been a greater football game ever played in that stadium than that. And a greater comeback. You got something for the rest of your life. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Michigan Replay. I was going to open the show, but Coach Carr in the locker room stole my thunder. I think you would probably disagree with that statement, Jim, because you played in the game in 1969. So I, I, my emotional uh, uh, response listen, there. Listen. Uh, I hope all those Michigan guys I, hey, out there that have played in a lot of great wins forgive me. By the way, Jim Manish, the captain of that 69 team, was honored before the game Saturday against Michigan State. Uh, but well, the truth is, there were a lot of great games, yeah, and this was one of them. And this was one of them. And Lloyd, it it might have been one of the best ever. And I agree with you. '69 was a watershed game and a great one, and I played in it. But this one against Michigan State was as good as it gets. Well, it was a lot of fun at the end. <laughs> at the end, <laughs> wasn't much Painful. fun in that. There was some pain in there. <laughs> I was going to say. It wasn't much fun until about seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter when you started a comeback. Well, we, we uh, made a couple big plays. I think Braylon Edwards made more than a couple. And Jim, great players in, in big games find a way to make plays. And that was really one of the stories today. Michigan wins it 45-37 in triple overtime. Here's where the pain starts early. Well, you know, we've been uh, an outstanding defensive football team in the last month against the big uh, running plays or passing plays, but this Cobb uh, had a great day, 70-plus yards and in a hurry. In a hurry, and that puts Michigan State up on their first possession, 7 nothing. But your drive to answer with Michael Hart I thought was key in the game. Well, you know, we've, we've uh, responded uh, in these kind of situations uh, a lot of times this fall, and this was a big one. Here on the reverse, uh, we probably could have scored a touchdown if we get a block here on uh, uh, the, the defensive back, but uh, we do. Uh, come out running the football extremely well in the first quarter, uh, Jim. And this kid, Michael Hart, had another big day. Yes, he did. This is his third straight 200-yard game, the first time in Michigan history that's happened. Well, there's Dudley and uh, uh, the great block on the linebacker. But our offensive line really uh, asserted themselves uh, in this drive. We rushed the football very effectively going into the win. Seven to seven at this point, and then Michigan State comes back. This offense was outstanding. This they, is a tough order. There's no question about it. They spread you out. They moved Stanton. Uh, the launching pat, uh, points uh, for the quarterback. He hit. He used the the tight end very effectively in the zone blitzes, hitting the seams for some big plays in there. And they also kept him on the move, and he had run pass action, didn't he? Well, and he made some uh, uh, good yardage here, breaking contain. Uh, and, and we had a very difficult time uh, in the opening game. I think Michigan State uh, utilized the the bye week. Really, and this is a play here. The uh, shovel pass to Shabazz uh, was a, was one of many plays that they used very effectively. Here we get a blitz, uh, miss the tackle, and uh, Stanton runs a quarterback draw to give him a 14-7 lead. And that is a big lead at this point because they've just answered your score. And then things get worse. You get a punt partially blocked. Well, they, they came off our right side here, and our defense makes one of the most important stops of the day. Uh, Jim, we uh, uh, had some leakage off the right side, and uh, they made a good play here. And this is one of their plays that you absolutely stopped, Scotty McClintock and Pat Massey. That forces them to try a 50-yard field goal. Well, I thought McClintock had a great game, a lot of ton of tackles, and uh, certainly with the win, this was a miss that uh, they'd like to have back. All right. That keeps it at 14-7 to seven at that point. But they continue offense. You've got them stacked up in there, but they continue to work the option, and Stanton continues to run the ball effectively. Well, he's running inside the tackle there, uh, and we're all spread out. They had a lot of great uh, calls and execution. Here he hits uh, the, tight, the other tight end, Randall, for big yardage down inside the 20-yard line. 
But here's a goal line stand that was big. Look Watch at Lamar Woodley. W Lamar Woodley, uh, as we were talking earlier, probably had his best game. Just a dominating performance and a great play there, using his hands to ward off the blocker, uh, making a big play for a loss. And now our defense is able to hold them uh, to a field goal. And that keeps it at 17-7 at that point. And then here's one of the bigger plays in the game. This is where Drew Stanton gets hurt. Well, uh, Lamar from the backside uh, makes a play on him when he cuts up inside. He comes down on his shoulder, and uh, uh, then we're going to get the football back here, uh, Jim, late in the second quarter. And this is a big drive to get some points. Well, we got uh, we didn't do much with the football and the wind in the second quarter, but uh, here late we do get uh, uh, some momentum going, and after a penalty and a sack. Uh, Chan Henney hits uh, Braylon Edwards for a big play down inside the 20 yard line. Gives us a chance to kick a field goal. Well, it gets you some room to kick a field goal. Now it's not such a long one. And Revis drills it right through there. And at that point, you go to halftime and it's a 17 10 game. Well, Matt Gutierrez had surgery early in the week, Jim. We'll miss the rest of the season. I thought Adam Finley did a great job first time under pressure as a holder. Uh, and Ross Mann continues to do a great job snapping. And if Garrett Rivas misses a kick, uh, we're not sitting here talking about a great Michigan win. Well, that was the first half. The second half, it gets a little painful, but then a lot happier as we go to overtime. Don't go away. We'll come back and take a look at that second half. But first, we hear from Lawrence Reed, who says the Spartans were formidable indeed. And when you got those three running backs, number 20, 21, and 30, and then that backup quarterback was good too. So, you know, with Michigan State, I know they're going to go on and win the rest of their games. When it comes down to winning at the end, you know, the momentum just shifts. You got to change. You got to go all out. You got to give it your all because you know that the game is on the line. So that's what happens at the end of the game. Well, Michigan trailed Michigan State at halftime by seven, and you go to the second half, and this is one where you took the wind again so you could get it in the fourth quarter, and you knew your defense would have some problems in field position, but they got you the ball back. And, Jim, we put together a great drive. Here uh, throwing that wind was uh, really strong, uh, and he hits uh, Jason Avon, who had uh, an excellent game. Here again, the drop back, and he hits on a big third and eight. Steve Breston doesn't try to catch a lot of balls, but the ones he does are important, and that one gave us a big first down. <laughs> and how about this run by Michael Hart? Well, he's <laughs> he's something. He's, you know, watch him fight and fight. They're going to try to strip the ball here, and uh, he does a great job uh, struggling for extra yards without turning the football. And over. then this was the one play you didn't want to see. Well, uh, here we, on a second down and four, we are going to complete the pass for first down. Braylon trying to make a play gets hit from behind. The ball gets stripped, and uh, Michigan State recovers, and we lose some great field position. Here. All right, well, you hold them on their possession, and then you can't do anything with it. This is their second possession afterwards with Dowdell at quarterback. Well, uh, they, they kept him on the run again here uh, against man coverage. They make a good play, and uh, Damon makes a good throw. Uh, giving Michigan State good field position. We stiffen and uh, hold them to a field goal. And that was in the fourth quarter, so now it's 20 to 10. Uh, but this is where it gets a little tough. You go three and out, and then they come back and they hit this sprint draw again. Well, this is, uh, this is a play where things look awfully bad. Uh, we get a guy that does not stay in his gap, which creates a seam. The ball gets into the secondary too fast. Cobb is uh, a jet. I mean, he can fly. And now we're down 17, seven minutes to go in the game. Jim, what were you thinking? I was thinking that uh, right now we need some big time help. And you get it, though. Michael Hart gets out of there. These are three successive plays. Chad Henney then goes to A. Vant. Well, uh, we we're, we're had some protection problems. We gave up four sacks in this game, and I credit. Uh, an outstanding uh, defensive scheme. Uh, Michigan State, three of their linebackers had sacks. But on this particular drive, here, a ball that uh, he's, it's underthrown. Braylon came back underneath and made uh, a big play when we desperately needed one. They stiffen, 
but Garrett Rivas knocks through a, a, a field goal, and now it's a two-score game. And you needed, you needed that field goal. A lot of people wanted to maybe go for the score, but you needed the field goal anyway, right? Well, it, absolutely, and here's one of the biggest plays of the game, because uh, on the onside kick, Brian Thompson makes a great uh, play, hustling and getting the ball back, and now the crowd has really changed here on a deep ball where Chad Henney really gets hit. Braylon makes an absolutely great catch. That's uh, that's as good a catch as you're going to see. And in two minutes from being 17 down, you're back in it at 27-20. Well, Jim, with, with only seven minutes to go, you've got to score fast because you need three scores. Here, uh, Steve Bresson does a great job against uh, uh, their kicking game. They're trying to pin us down in there. And he, he does not let the ball bounce. He makes a catch and gets a good return. We got great field position. And I like that you don't panic and go to the air all the time. Here you run Michael Hart on a big play. Well, I think uh, you have to credit the play calling of Terry Malone. That's uh, There's no question. We kept her poised. We've only got one timeout left here. And uh, then again, same guy. Throw it up there. And he's going to make something happen. And this is unbelievable because it's 27 to 27 at this point after being down 17 with just about eight minutes to go. You asked me, what did I think? I wasn't terribly confident. <laughs> the question is, what were you feeling at the time? Well, you know, when they went up, uh, when they hit the big play with Cobb uh, to go up 17, I, you know, we were talking to the silent. We got to make, we got to make a big play and a kickoff return, and then the ball, yeah. they squib it and it bounces over Steve's head. At that time, uh, I thought, well, maybe the brakes are just not going to go against us. And then we make a couple plays. Next thing you know, we're back in it. And, and the you got to credit these guys that never stop right. playing. The, the onside kick to get that put the entire game back in focus, didn't it? Jim Mike DeBoer put in a new. Uh, onside kick. We had two kickers in the game. I don't know if you noticed I that. I knew that. And uh, of course, uh, Garrett Rivas made the kick and a hustling play by uh, Brian Thompson. Uh, it was a great one. And it sends the game to overtime. We just thought we'd let you sit at home and wait a little while. We'll show you the overtime. That's coming up next. But first, we hear from Tim Massacal. He said the Wolverines never doubted that they could get it done. Even in the fourth quarter, when we when we ha when were down by seven, I, I think the team, you know, we just realized, you know, we can still win this game. You know, I don't think, like, we ever thought we had doubt, but we just continued on. We just kept on playing. That, that just speaks for the heart of this team, the kind of players we got on this team. We were in the right place. The coaches were calling the right plays, getting us the right plays, and uh, we just performed well and uh, execute the plays well. Well, we're in overtime now. Michigan and Michigan State tied on Saturday 27. Tell me what you're thinking. It's only the what? third overtime now, in Michigan history. I know, Jim. and you've won them all. Well, knock on wood. Knock on wood. What You have plans, don't you? You, during the week, figure, what are we going to do in overtime, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And So, and what we, are you going to do this game? Well, we're going to try to, what, what you'd like to do is go on defense. And when we get to the third overtime here, I don't know if people out there know the rule that you must go for two if you right. score a touchdown, and that really makes the game. Frank Beckman and I told everybody about that. Well, good. I'm glad. Well, this is Frank. the first overtime. Yep. You get stalled, but I want we, you to. We went on offense first. They won the toss, and here this kid makes another big kick. And it's the snapper, it's the holder, and it's the. And kicker. it's the protection. Right. And Great and, job. And, and the special teams were perfect. Yeah, they were outstanding. Okay, here they come now with their opportunity. Now they score a touchdown here, Jim. The game's over uh, from the backside there. We had good penetration on the play side. And Roy that was Banning on a third in. and one. Yep, and now they have to uh, try a field goal. And from that hash mark with the win, that's, none of these kicks are easy. Well, that ties the game up at 30. Now, now we go on defense, defense first, just after coming off. I think we're tired. I mean, there's, this game's been going on for five hours, and they get a they get a touchdown there, kick the extra point, and now the pressure's on us. And here you are on third and goal. Talk about a play. You talk about a clutch play. Jason Avant made a great move there to beat single coverage. Chad threw a perfect strike. And Jim, if we don't execute there. We're, going, we're down to one down on fourth down. It's not easy to throw the football down. It's 37, and now you're on offense. First. 
in the last uh, overtime Triple period. Triple overtime. Yep. And Braylon uh, makes a great cut there. Great throw. Great protection. And uh, this guy knows where the end zone is. Then, he? then you have to go for two. And this is another great play. Well, abs it puts a lot of pressure on the opponent because now when they get the football, they're going to score eight points, a, a touchdown, and a two-point conversion. Massacre made a great catch there, uh, and the coverage was good. He probably forced it in there, but uh, he's gotten away with some of those. Now, this is a play. They have Second a long down. yardage, 25, because they got a penalty. They had a penalty. This puts them in position at a Fourth down and eight here. We stopped them on third down. Here's the final play, and they're going to throw the football. We get good force there. And uh, there's Marcus Curry and Leon Hall back there. We, we pulled Dowdell up, and uh, the rest is history. It's a 45 37 triple overtime win. I want to talk to you about the call on the touchdown of Braylon Edwards because the earlier touchdowns he had always run down the sideline and caught the ball in the corner of the end zone. This time he fakes going outside and then busted across the middle on a post like cut. It was one of those little change ups you gave the secondary wasn't it? Jim he beat double coverage there. He went to the post which held the safety a little bit deeper and when he squared it off inside uh, Chad made a great throw, but Braylon ran a great route, and now there's nobody left on double coverage. They had double covered outside and inside. Braylon made a great route, great a great uh, uh, cut, and uh, that was a, as big a play as you can get. And as big a game, and people asked you after the game, was this bigger than a Minnesota comeback? And, all that, and th you said things run together, you know, you're getting old like yeah. all of us. This game was special just because of the rivalry and you said some great things about Michigan State and their effort which was unbelievable and, and about your team's resilience to come back. This had everything college football makes college football great. Well Jim I think for this rivalry Michigan Michigan State for Big Ten football I think uh, it, said, it speaks to the effort that two teams gave for 60 minutes plus. It's a, it's a kind of game it's a shame anybody has to lose because their coaches, their players were outstanding, and it went down to uh, the third overtime, and we made a play. But um, it's, it's a great football game, and it's a, there's a lot of credit there uh, for the Michigan State team. They did a great job, but ultimately the Wolverines win it 45-37 in triple overtime. Just an absolutely great day of college football. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, bringing it back to you. Hey, when we come back... Boy, and I are just going to chat about a bye week. Don't well, that miss be that. Fun. Don't miss that. Or take your no-dose. I'm not Never sure. nervous. We were just excited to be in this situation once again. We're excited to have a chance to pull it off, which we did. You know, we've been there. You know, Minnesota last year. You know, early this uh, year against Minnesota. We've been there two years, three years, four years. And so we're used to this. We practice this situation in practice. And so it's paying off. the locker room. We need this week off, you know, a couple guys banged up, you know, we'll, we'll get healed, you know, we'll be 100% uh, up when we go uh, face up against Northwestern. Well, the Wolverines have a bye week, so they don't have to play next week, and you said it comes at the exact perfect time for you after some emotional football, including Saturday against Michigan State. Jim, if you remember the start of this season, we had an extra week of preparation because Miami of uh, Ohio started the season early. We had a long training camp nine straight weeks, and I don't think a bye could ever come at a better time. You're nicked up a little bit, but from an injury standpoint, you're pretty healthy in, for the most part, aren't you? I think we're going to be uh, very healthy if, uh, with this week off. Uh, we, we're in good shape, and, and yet there's always some things that surface Monday or Tuesday, bumps and bruises, but the good news is we got time to heal up. Okay, let's talk football for a little bit about this team well, and where it's what do you think we were just talking? You That's know, not football. You know, you used to be a lot Thank of fun you. to do this show. <laughs> now you're turning out to yeah, get well, to be kind of a pain. Yeah, I can be a smart elf. Yes, you can. <laughs> it's good you recognize <laughs> that, though. From your, your standpoint, the improvement of this team from beginning to game nine. Well, Jim, today was a difficult game defensively because we gave up two really big plays, and we got to find a way to stop that. But I think offensively, we have really... Uh, balanced up. We have an ability to run the football, to throw the football. I think our special teams may be the biggest improvement on our team. 
and uh, defensively, uh, we're we're doing a lot of good things. We've just got to find a way uh, to cut down on the big plays. And take a week and kind of everybody recharge their batteries, right? Well, that's the most important thing, I think. This is a long, long season. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, and I, I think we're all uh, looking forward to being able to watch some other people play next Saturday. All right. Uh, everybody, just for your information, don't forget the M Go Blue for Mott the blue bracelet that you can buy, and this will help raise funds for a women's and children's hospital. Uh, the bracelets are available at the M Den, Myers, Dunham's, Atlanta Bread Company on campus, Great Divide in Flint, the M Let's Go Blue and Royal Oak, Moe's Sports Stores, and the Bivouac on campus, and you're the co-chair. Well, Dave Brandon and uh, Jan and Lori Carr, J Jim, this is going to be one of the greatest teams ever put together. We're going to get this hospital built. It's going to be the best children's hospital in the world. That's all I needed to hear. It's got to be good. Make sure you get your MGO Blue Vermont bracelet. Don't forget, next week we're coming your way with Michigan Replay. Don't forget the bash at the Big House Grand Valley State against the Michigan Tech. A lot of good things happening. Make sure you join us right here, same time, same place, for Michigan Replay. Michigan Replay has been brought to you in part by...